is a collection of videos of how Chinese exploit Africa in some places that are involved in fraud led activities, trying to scam people, internet fraud, and all sorts. I don't know what is wrong with some African leaders. Is it that they don't understand the game? Some of these Chinese are residing in African countries without valid legal documents. Some of them came in as tourists with their tourist visa and normally immigration law does not allow you to work in any country with your tourist visa. Your tourist visa does not grant you any legal right to work in a country. When they come to Africa and their visa gets expired, they stay back in Africa doing whatever they are doing because they believe that nobody will look out for them. And because most of these companies belong to their people, they can as well work without uh, working documents. And even the authorities in charge in these countries, they don't really bother to look out for them. They are so comfortable being without a legal document. And when the situation flips, it's an African person, you can't do that. You can't try that with Chinese. They will make sure they fish you out. They will make sure that you face the law and after which you go back to your country. Hi guys, you are watching M Cheeky Series. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for your support. I appreciate that. It's good to have you around again. And if you are new to the channel, thank you for clicking on this video. Make yourself comfortable and let us get on with this gist. So there are so many Chinese on the continent of Africa. According to the statistics, over 1 million Chinese. Some people are even saying 10 million. I don't know how truthful it is, but I know that there are lots of them scattered all over in different countries. And some of these people, they don't have a legal document. And in some cases, immigration authorities don't even bother to check whether the documents are expired or not. And in some cases, it is very sad that they even bribe the authorities to make sure they get the country's paper document, whether it's forged, whether it's fake. I don't even know. Because some people don't bother to check the authenticity of the document that they have, which is very sad. In their country, if you do a thing like this, you can never get out of it. They can't let you to go free. And some African countries, they are playing so naive, they don't understand their debt trap loan that they keep collecting. And when you default, they take over your resources. And they also have plans of land grabbing. Because in some places, they are into farming. Like in Oyo State and in Ogun State, Nigeria, they are into farming. But there's an incident that happened in Ogun State. The indigents of Ogun State, they are complaining that they are encroaching into their land, taking their lands and chasing away people in the neighboring communities. And when you talk, they send policemen to you. I wonder why African leaders are giving Chinese land. I thought land is supposed to be on lease. Are they supposed to own the land? And when the communities complain about them taking their land, Chinese now quote, Nigerian Land Use Act of 1977. Can you imagine that? They now tell Nigerians what the law says about that. These African leaders should wake up, most especially Nigerian government should wake up. These guys are not getting it. They don't want to empower their people. They prefer Chinese to come over their land and take over all the resources. I would like you guys to watch this video till the end to understand the main reasons why Chinese are trooping to Africa, the reason why they are investing heavily in Africa, making African puppet leaders to borrow from them. So I'm gonna sign off here. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And also help me to share this video widely so that people can understand uh, the reason behind Chinese being all over Africa. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've not done already and I'm gonna catch you in my next video. Bye. 34 men and 5 women of Chinese origin have been arraigned before court, presided over by Grade 1 Magistrate Mario Nimangeni over operating business on phone and computer scrap without trading licenses. It is alleged that the group was also found dismantling several mobile phones and computers for trading purposes without a trading license. Prosecution alleges that the same group was found in possession of computer motherboards, phones and electricity meters that were seemingly a stolen property. The Chinese were also found in possession of 1,895 Airtel and 223 MTN SIM cards registered in Ugandan names, which they were reportedly using for WeChat, an online platform for messaging and financial transactions between October 2019 and March 2020. Some of the suspects pleaded guilty, while others alleged that they were being framed. Three prime suspects were convicted of being in possession of stolen property and are to be sentenced on March 31st. Those accused of being in illegal possession of wildlife trophies are to return to court on April 9th for trial. The group has been remanded to Chitalia Government Prison located on Mitiana Road. 
Tens of thousands of Congolese kids are involved in every stage of mining for cobalt. More than half the world's supply comes from the DRC. 20% of that is mined by hand. We traveled along collapsing dirt roads. Children are everywhere, digging for cobalt in abandoned open pit mines. And it's clear, security officials in charge here, only some of them in uniform, have something to hide. There's such sensitivity around cobalt mine that every few hundred feet we get stopped requesting letters, documents, even though we have official permission to be here. But for the Chinese middlemen we saw who buy the cobalt, there are no such constraints. They have free access to the mines. Uh, gentlemen, this is a village far away in Oyo State. I'm following my escort and the Chinese have set up acres and acres of farmland and they're growing all kinds of vegetables, fruits and whatnot. Um, I'm not going to engage in too much commentary, only to say, well, it's a collective shame on our part that we just keep complaining and complaining about every little thing. I see cucumber, wow, I see I see Chinese lettuce, Chinese, I see cabbage. Chinese cabbage. Uh, this, this is a cocos one, a cabbage. Uh, that's Chinese cabbage, right? No, not from China, people from Italy. Wow. So oh, there we go. 15 minutes from Ibadan. I promise you, pepper. Cucumber, broccoli, this guy, he started his farm three months ago and he has uh, 150 hectares. Angel, what is this one? Oh, this is a uh, cucumber, right? What this is this? Uh, no, another style of the, look like the cucumber, yeah. but not cucumber. Not, uh, wow. have many, many, how can I say? Not to be exactly 40. Okay. Have a white uh, carrot. Carrots over there. White, white, white carrot. White carrots. These are uh, uh, better than the Nigerian one. Yeah. You cannot believe we can cut it, so if we can buy some. Wow. 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 A Chinese farm in southwest Nigeria's Ogun state has set up an integrated poultry farm in order to focus on enhancing the nation's food security through commercial agricultural production. Uh, Ma'am, we need to take this vehicle in and we need to check all these people's uh, documentation yeah. if they're legal in South Africa. Yeah. So, and we have, we are Tetamo, we are. We are still guessing this. I tell you, I'm going to go and say, I'm going to go. Do you still have his license? No. Okay, what's going to happen now, ma'am? You say the car is in your name. Okay, we need to verify your documentation if you're all legal in South Africa. So we're going to take you to SAPS here at Lang Laughter, where we're going to verify everything. Okay, you need to phone people to bring your documentation to see to show to us and prove to us that you're legally in South Africa. Which one? Which one? What? Which document? How did you come to South Africa? These people. Passport. Has you got a passport? Passport. Good idea. Where, where did you get the ID from? I don't know. You don't know? You but he's got a South African ID. It's getting worse, guys. Where did you get the ID? You know, I don't understand one thing. These people can't speak English and they can't speak any... Whoa, 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 whoa. They can't speak English. They can't speak any of other uh, of our other languages, but they're in possession of a driver's license of our country. They're in possession of documents. How did they apply for these things? The Chinese made it. The Chinese made it? Yeah. Where did they make it? You have a friend that... Uh, when did you this gentleman came to South Africa? Ask him. How 
about this what's that um what about the asians taking over africa oh yes oh my goodness i made the comment when yeah, you I was talked about it yeah right. yeah ethiopia right the only african nation to never be colonized up until now ethiopia is one of the largest recipients of chinese aid in the world ethiopia also has a female president now shout out to the queen but guess what ethiopia better do something fast because they are becoming over dependent on Chinese support. And why is the Chinese taking over Africa? Because they studied what the white man did and they said we're going to do it better than the white man. They are coming into Africa for four reasons. Reason number one, the China man is coming into Africa. China is overpopulated. I was just there a year ago in January of 18. There's too many of them. They got over 2 billion people in one country. America is only, what, 500 million? Mm. They got 2 billion. China is looking for uh, like unexploited lands where they can send their excess poor people. Africa is perfect. That's number one. We got to reduce the population of China, so we're going to send all of our unwanted to Africa. Same thing Britain did when they founded the 13 yep. colonies. Second reason China taking over Africa, look at all the poor Africans. Can you imagine a better place to go and open up your factories and businesses where you can pay people even less than what you pay them in China? There's no minimum wage in many African countries for foreign businesses. You can, you can exploit African labor better than you can exploit, exploit Taiwanese and Vietnamese labor. So the second reason they're in Africa, because guess what? I keep more of the profit. Mm. Third reason they in Africa is to take over the resources just like the white man that's why they're giving out all these loans these are not grants let me be clear the money that china is giving africa are not grants they are loans you might say why is china giving kenya more money than they know kenya could pay back you follow me why are they giving a poor country like ethiopia more money because they don't want you to pay it back right. because when you look at the contract guess what it says if you default right, on this loan, loan we keep all your, your tea money. fields are mine. Mm. All your copper <laughs> mines are mine. Mm. All your oil reserves are mine. And guess what? You already have an African nation mm. that has defaulted on the loan. I think it was Kenya. Mm. But don't quote me. As a result of the default, <clears throat> China now owns all of a particular resource in that country. And the fourth reason that they are in Africa is to make the Africans dependent on them culturally, intellectually, educationally, and otherwise because China plans to colonize Africa the same way the white man did. And I'm hurting by saying this, y'all. You know yeah. why I'm hurting? Because Patrice Lumumba died for Africa to be free. Thomas Sankara died for Africa to be free. Steve Biko died for Africa to be free. Chris Hani died for Africa to be free. Amakal Cabral died for Africa to be free. And after all the blood that has been spilled, Deedon Kamafi died for Africa to be free. And after all the blood has been spilled, you mean to tell me 60 years after we kicked the white man out, you're going to roll out the red carpet to the Chinese. It's like slavery all over again. It's slavery all over. Oh, but it's different now because guess what the yeah. Chinese are doing? They're adding a little twist. They're building military bases and police stations everywhere they set up shop. I'm going to be interviewed by DJ Booty Magazine next week. They contacted me last night. They want to interview me because DJ Booty is the first African country that has a Chinese police station. Can I ask you a question? If you are the president mm. of Wakanda, right. you are a sovereign nation. I want to come and do business in your sovereign nation. Can you please tell me why you allow me to bring my own police? You are a sovereign nation. Part of being sovereign means what? You control the military. But Africa is letting China bring their own police. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Lord. Let me tell you what's going to happen. The Chinese as disrespect, and by the way, they are as disrespectful in Africa as they are here. Right. So when you read these stories in New York about the sister being beat up in the nail salon, Yeah, I remember that, yep. They do the same thing in Africa. Yeah. Oh, I've, the Chinese think they own it. When you go, you want to see what I'm talking about. Guess what? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. There's going to be a conflict. An African is going to get disrespected by a Chinese. It's going to turn into a group conflict. And the Chinese military is going to hurt one of our African brothers and sisters. It's going to turn into a civil war. Yeah. And then China is going to send a whole army in. 
and they're going to colonize that whole country. And they're going to do just like America does. We're just making your country safe for democracy. <laughs>